In this module, we will discuss the ion exchange chromatography, an important technique which is again used during for the separation of different molecules, biomolecules present in the substance. Now, ion exchange chromatography as the name implies, is the chromatography where the separation is based on the charge. That is the charge on the molecule, whatever, there may be positive, negative, or the amount of the charge. With that, we use that thing, we use this charge as a factor for separating those chemicals are those biomolecules. Now the use of ion exchange chromatography is used for almost any kind of charged molecules. Whenever we have charged molecules, we can use the ion exchange chromatography where we can separate these. Now for example, large proteins small nucleotides and amino acids, all of them, they have got different charges and we can separate these compounds on the basis of charges which they have. Now, ion exchange chromatography, it preserves the analyte molecules on the column based on the ionic interaction. Because with all these molecules, which I have mentioned earlier, these molecules can be separated on the basis of the charge and the columns used where they attach themselves. Now, again, there are two types of the ion exchange chromatography. One is, one is the cation exchange, and the second is the anion exchange. Of course, you know, whenever there is a charge on a particle, on a compound, it can behave as a cation or it can behave as an anion. Now, for example, in the case of anion or acidic ion exchanger, it possesses negatively charged group and these will attract positively charged cation as shown in this diagram with a resin there is a positively charged cation exchanger similarly with a resin there is a cm cation exchanger so they both actually what they will do they will attract positively charged cation positively charged compound, they will be attracted by these uh, supports on the resin and the separation can take place. Similarly, positively charged groups that will attract negatively charged anion and that is also called a basic ion exchanger. Here again, a different type of anion exchanger group that is attached to the resin, for example, DAE anion exchanger that can be attached to the resin and it will behave as a basic ion exchanger where it will, as a matter of fact, what it will do, it will attract the negatively charged anions with it and do the separation. Now, this technique has advantages. It is non-denaturing technique, it can, be be, it can be used at all stages and scales of purification. That is, there are, you know, during the separation technology or separation technique, there are some techniques where the compound or the support is changed. But in this case, it is a denaturing technique where the substance is not changed and an IEX separation can be controlled by changing pH. 
because it is an ionic and cationic. So when we change the pH of the material or the pH of the column or the elutant, then we can change the conditions, salt concentration and or the ion exchange media. So we can do the separation by controlling the changing the pH by changing the salt concentration and on the ion exchange medium as well where it will be used. Further advantage is that it can serve as a concentrating step. You see, we can use this chromatography technique for concentrating the material. And a large volume of dilute sample can be applied to the medium where the required substance, where the required, for example, if we want to concentrate the amino acid or the nucleotide and they are very dilute in that solution, we can pass that solution through that chromatographic column and it will concentrate them. Now, as it is anionic or ion based, therefore it is, it offers high selectivity. That is, if in the mixture there is a cationic, anionic material, it will, as a matter of fact, will be highly selective to separate the material which we want to. But it has also disadvantages. Like, it is a, there is a costly equipment involved and the more expensive chemicals are required for the making the raisins and the column. And the second one is that the turbid, turbidity of the solution which we pass, that should be below 10 part million. So it does, you know, put a hindrance. It does put a limitation it, or, or the controlling condition on the material, on the substance which we pass through this that it has a certain turb turbidity range for making the separating molecules.